right, y'all, because get in here so we can talk about this new episode of Love During Lockup. I know I missed the week, but it wasn't too much that went on last week, so we're going to touch base on it when we get to talking about it this week. Before we do, make sure y'all like the video, subscribe to the channel, get down in these comments, and turn your post notifications on. I greatly appreciate it. This is the episode of the Goops, and we're going to get into it. We start out with Ayana. She in a car with her brother. They going to the park to meet Jamal Mama and his sisters, Okay. Um, of course, just like everybody else, when we in the car, in these scenes with Ayanna, she got to have Jamal call and they start asking him, well, you, you think you going to marry, you know, the brother, like, you think you going to marry Ayanna? You going to marry my sister? And Jamal hit her with a, yeah, we going to get married, but we said we going to do it. We going to wait two years. She like, hold up. What? Two years for what? She was hitting him. She was hitting her syllable. Two years for what? We're waiting two years for what? Jamal Holler, we waiting two years to get married. I mean, I don't want to come straight out and get married. Nigga been putting that jail talk down on her. Telling her he going to come straight out and marry her. And now he getting that pressure from, from everybody else. He's starting to backtrack. Y'all, we can see what's happening a mile away. Goop number one, okay? She mad. She like, oh, okay, heard you. Heard you, cool. She got out of the phone. You know, she irritated. Her brother sitting over there, you know, he giggling. For one, y'all all jailbirds for two, because the brother been in jail for like four years. We just found out he got out from four years, and we know Ayanna facing 15 days to 90 days. So, yeah, that's why that mama be pissed off. Her, I don't even know if y'all got the same mama, and I'm mad for this woman, because y'all over her putting that woman through a whole lot. It's ridiculous. Anyway, we go to Andrew. He at Candace's new apartment. She finna get out. He meet up with her friend Denise. Tom bad. This is supposed to be a, a mother figure. No, sir. That is a Sally. That's what she is. And you can tell because when y'all was just, it was just y'all before Candace called on that phone. Y'all was in there putting that furniture together. Having, she was, oh, yeah, you know, this is great. <laughs> But then as soon as Candace called and y'all got the pleasantries out of the way, she, that woman took that phone and said, I'm going to go in here um, to the bathroom and I'll be back out. He said, okay, okay. She going to the bathroom, close the door, bitch. Ooh, I know you finna just run all over him, ain't you? You finna get out and just run all over him. That's the true T. She is a Sally. She ain't no mother figure to that damn woman. That's her friend of all, uh, if anything. She finna tell her to do do the damn thing. Candace on the phone like, you know, I really don't want to move, you know, until I get some type of custody of my son. And they be knowing what they doing when they say that shit. Y'all know what y'all going to have to go through to get custody of y'all children. When y'all come out of these jails and y'all been locked up for years, y'all ain't had no custody. You know what I'm saying? They been fucked up. I feel like that is something that they use so that they can make these men move there. Because I feel like that's what she wants to do. It don't matter that she put in her bio that she was willing to relocate. That was just to hook you, fool. Now she done hooked you. And she finna slowly reel your ass from uh, around to New Jersey to Nevada. It It's no other way you two gone. And that's what the lady Denise was saying. He, he'll do anything for you. Oh, he's not going to tell you. No, he's going to do anything. You tell him to do. And she ain't lying. He's going to do whatever. This man willing to deplete his 401k. In order to help this woman live a lifestyle that he cannot afford as well. Where can I, can y'all please help me? Where can I find these men? Because baby, it seems like if you ain't behind the bars, you don't get this kind of special treatment. Y'all think just because we out here and we ain't locked up, I ain't went fucked around on nobody and, and robbed nothing, stole nothing, did no drugs, none of that. That I don't deserve for you to deplete your savings and take care of me. This is some bullshit. I'm, I'm, I'm really considering making me a page and saying I've been to prison. But the only thing stopping me, y'all, is because I don't know enough prison jargon. I don't know the talk. I don't know none of that. So when they get to asking about court dates and lawyer fees and all of that, I'm going to freeze. I'm going to be lost. I ain't going to know what the hell nobody talking about. I, that's, just, that's just what it is. That's the only thing stopping me. But where in the hell can I go? What site I got to sign up on? If I can find me one of these men that don't care, don't ask no questions, he just ready to spend all his daggone money. This is crazy to me. Anyway, baby, Shantae Picks done got returned. Goop number two. Actually, uh, this is goop number three because the shit with Andrew was goop number two. 
Goop number three, Shantae Pitches done got returned. She looking silly. She done called around to the detention center. And it's a damn shame when you talking to your daughter and your daughter is on camera saying, I think my mama just, she just be looking for love in all the wrong places. It's just so sad. You know what I'm saying? Because even your child can see that you have a pattern in you where you are spending money and excessive time and excessive um, energy on people that ain't reciprocating. You done call around to the detention center and ask them for, now, why would some pictures be returned? And they done told you that the pictures even got returned because you had some explicit in it. And that she knows she didn't put nothing explicit in the pictures. Or it was something to do with some contraband. that she claims she know he don't have nothing to do, True don't have nothing to do with no contraband. Or somebody else done sent him some pictures that were explicit. And he done got put on the list where he can't get mail. So that's, I mean, me, I would deduce that as well. That would be my thought. If I know that this, it's, it's men don't have nothing to do with no, no contraband or nothing like that. And it really can't be, it wasn't me. None of my pictures was, was nice. Okay. It got to be something else. So they talk on the phone and this fool going to tell her, ooh, the jail talk. I'm going to tell you, spit her this story, Tom back. Um, yeah, my homeboy <laughs> was telling me, doing all this talking, talking about I be talking to this kind of chick and this kind of chick. So I just told him, send me a picture of these kind of chicks you talk. Why you need pictures of what kind of chicks he's talking to if you weren't trying to talk to him? That don't make no sense. But then y'all see what he tried to twist it and do. He gonna try to twist it and say, let's make this make sense, Chante. Because why would I tell a girl to send me a picture of her ass and knowing I can't get pictures like that, that's the point, fool. You didn't tell her to send pictures of her ass. She just sent it. Not knowing she couldn't send it and you don't get caught up. Because me, like I just said, I'm an amateur at this. If I'm talking to a nigga in jail, I don't know that I can't send him a picture bent over with my booty hole at. I don't know I can't send him that. I might just be feeling froggy that day and leave. And I'm sending him some crazy show, titty shot. I ain't know. I ain't know you can't do that. That the, that the letters and stuff get flagged. That's why these kind of shows is informational. You know? Because you learn stuff. But, um, you she, like she said, that's the that's what I'm following on. And I feel like another woman done sent you some pictures of who else you talking to. He piled, uh, uh, he done piled looking stupid. But what I find odd is he always find a way to mention that he's not, he's never dated black women. He's always dated white women, been attracted to white women. And I really feel like Shantae needs to listen to him when he say that. Because... I feel like even if he do come out and get with her somewhere down the line, there's going to be an issue with somebody. I'm not even going to say a white girl. I'm just going to say somebody that he is more attracted to. Like you're not his typical type. He haven't even seen you yet. Um, He's basically going off of the stuff you've been doing for him all these years and holding him down. And like, he's going off of stuff like that based on what, why he want to marry you and shit. It's not, him looking at you, him wanting to have sex with you, him being physically attracted to you, because that means something. It really does. They've never met. And so I really want her to be careful when it comes to that. And especially now that she's finding out her pictures is getting returned because some ho was sending him some old nasty pictures. And she know it wasn't her. Anyway, now Rick, he on a bike ride. Rick is a couple, um, or Rick and Samantha is a couple that came in on the last episode, but it wasn't really too much about them. We learned that they met in school, high school or middle school, one of the two, and they reconnected all these years later. Now she is basically living in like, I don't know if it's like a, um, rehabilitation center or what they call it, like a re-entry um, center or something like that where she can work and all of that. And basically she's getting prepared to live back out in the world, but she's not really locked up. She just can't leave where she's at. And they're engaged. They're engaged because Rick don't propose to her. Now in this episode, Rick getting ready to go, um, to his high school reunion. Rick used to be an alcoholic on the last episode. Um, we learned that he's an alcoholic and his nieces are really scared for him. 
um, relapsing, especially being with somebody like Samantha, who is in jail because of alcohol and stuff like that. So they're worried about him. And we also find out that that might not even just have to be they worry because Samantha's also worried about him. Rick is getting ready to go to his high school reunion. And she's talking about she's worried about him going into the reunion and possibly relapsing. Or she do got another motive because she like, you done hooked up with one of the women's back in the last reunion. And I'm worried about her coming too. Rick done said he ain't even told none of his friends or nobody that he done proposed. Now, here's why I find that wrong, Rick. Because you are the one that proposed. Now you getting on camera talking about, oh, um... You know, I don't want to rush and I want to make sure we're getting married for the right reasons. But you're the one that proposed. I mean, is it not clicking? I, am I like, seriously, you proposed to her. It's not like she's the one that ma that was like, we need to get married. Let's get married. You're the one that proposed to her. So you the one that that wanted to move at this rate. And now you get mad at her because she's doing shit a fiance is supposed to do. Make sure your ass ain't round to that reunion acting a fool. And look what you did. You went straight in a reunion, went straight for the bitch that you messed with. Y'all start hugging this bitch drunk. Then the other bitch, she like, yeah. Me and Rick, when you know, when we run into each other, we definitely run into each other. So I want to make sure we weren't overlapping. Ugh. It is crazy. And then look at Rick. Are we seeing the same man? I don't. Lord, it must be that. In their age range attraction. Because I don't. Even when they keep putting up the picture of him. What he looked like when he was in the high school. I'm just like what the hell are y'all seeing? Y'all was more attracted to the fact that. Y'all keep saying he used to hang out with all the cool boys. And y'all attracted to that. Because this man don't look like a bit of nothing. But Samantha ain't wrong. For wanting it to be known that they're engaged. And it's crazy that she had to be the one to break the news. Especially after them women's was in there flying all over you. And throwing they self at you. Group number four. Because why ain't you telling these people you engage, sir? Anyway. I got to pull up to meet Jamal, Mama, um, and sisters, a.k.a. this pack of studs. And they coming at her. How dare y'all about, um, Are you, is this the girlfriend or the fiance or the mistress? I'm trying to figure out based on what you do. How dare y'all question her about what she do when y'all when y'all son, brother, got four baby mamas and six children of his own? Like, what? Come on. Make it make sense, y'all. Stop playing games, okay? This man got too much baggage for you to be worried about what the hell this girl doing if they saying that they in a committed relationship. Now, I am going to just say... On Ayana's part, Ayana, whatever your name is, it's just it really don't look good that she, that this man used to be with her ex best friend, and then she's also the baby mama. I thought she was just a girlfriend, and then we finding out that she got a child or you know multiple children by, him, and you done stolen from her. Of course, everybody looking at this funny, you know what I'm saying, and I don't really approve of that that's the only thing about ayana and jamal relationship but then group number what we on five here we go we find out that this man been married before <laughs> ayana shy she like hold on you what you married i guess they got something where in his religion it's different if you married under the the religion versus if you married regular and she was like no i asked you if it was if you were married under the religion or regular and you told me no both times he like you ain't never asked me that you ain't never asked me that the pack of studs is sitting there looking at each other you know they like mm, here we go here we this is what we came to do we came to shake shit up and start a whole bunch of bullshit to make sure that this shit was real. And now we see that it ain't, this nigga ain't even told you he been married. And that is something that you have to take up. But she like, you know, Ayana's like, okay, bet, bet. You know, she getting smart with him, getting snippy. Basically trying to get him up off the phone. Um, Because she's embarrassed, as she should be. Because you running around telling people, for one, you done got gooped twice in one day. I need to call this five and six. Because, for one, you in the car telling your brother y'all finna get married. As soon as he get out, he get on the phone and talk about Oh, uh, we gonna wait two years and you shocked. Now you get around the stud pack and they say, oh, he been married before. This gonna be his second marriage. Now you finding out that you gonna be wife number two and not wife number one. I don't understand. That's what I don't understand. Like, why do you 
do y'all think it would be better for these women to find shit like that out from your close friends, your family members, your cousin, sister, bro, whatever, versus finding the shit out from you? It's ridiculous to me. I don't understand. That's that's the shit that come with that jail talk. And Rick done pulled her around to the reunion. And Sandy all up in his damn face. She would not leave him alone so much so that when Samantha called him on the phone, um, she was all in there talking about, now, what are you, are you guys' girlfriend and boyfriend? That pissed Samantha off because she like, oh, he didn't want to tell you? And, <laughs> and then we find out that he tells finally that they engaged. Sandy, she looking shocked because she just knew she was going to get her one that night. And she drunk, um, boots. It's crazy. Stumbling. She looked wild. Um, but basically, she just was like, after she made a fool of herself on the phone, she like, okay, I'm going to let y'all talk. Samantha, let it be known. This is why we can't keep doing this long distance stuff. You need to go on and move to Idaho. Um, we learned that they apparently he been telling her that he's going to relocate. And that's the, another thing that's unfair about this shit. Because that's what I was talking about with the whole Andrew situation. It is kind of on the man whether or not he's going to choose to sustain the relationship and move to where these women are at because they can't leave nowhere. They can't move. Like, and it's crazy because when you had a case like Shantae and True, when the woman is the one on the outside, it ain't no question. Oh, you can't, you got to be paroled wherever you at, say less. I'm just going to sell my house and, and come move there. They don't even question it. The men be hesitant as hell to move to a different state for these women. Rightfully so, though. I'm really not going to do too much on y'all because I understand that. The man said he's retired. He's living on pension. He only budgeted for him um, not to be married. And that's understandable. He wasn't expecting an expense like moving cross country, cross state, wherever the hell y'all at. Because I forgot where he from. But I know that she, I think they in Arizona, but I, I, might, I might be mixing it up. But I know she wants him to move to Idaho. And he said that's going to be a burden on him. And you need to think about that. You know, it's not fair to have him be the one to carry the burden of having to move, especially when you the one that's locked up. Now, the episode ends off Andrew, he waiting to pick up Candace. And we also find out that Candace might not even be able to go to this apartment that this man paying for. See what I'm saying? I would have been there the next day, Andrew. Shit. She might not even be able to go stay at the apartment. She got to get approval. She might have to stay in housing for an additional two weeks when she do get out. Before she can get an address and move into the apartment. But the good thing is, hell, she already got the damn apartment furnished. All kind of food already in the refrigerator. So I'm like, I'm finna, you know what? We finna end it here, y'all, because I'm finna get mad. Um, y'all make sure y'all get in these comments and let me know what website I need to get on and make me a fake inmate profile so I can find me one of these men that's gonna pay all my bills. Like, make sure y'all like the video, subscribe to the channel, turn your post notifications on, and y'all know I'm gonna be back on the next one because we're gonna find one. <laughs>